Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're in the Palo Alto studios today to talk really about the customer journey. Um, we're excited to have uh, our guest today who flew in all the way from Istanbul, Turkey, which is a very long flight. Uh, it's Attila Bayrak, he's the Chief Analytics Officer for AckBank. Welcome. Hi. So, so first of all, I hope you, get, uh, hope you get some time to catch up on your sleep before you turn around and fly all the way back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit quick uh, <laughs> to speak about uh, finance and banking, but it's good to be here. Well, we're glad you made the trip, and so before we jump in, for people that aren't familiar, give us a little bit about AkBank and the history of the bank. Yeah, sure, sure. AkBank is one of the uh, leading private banks in Turkey, and it's almost uh, 70 years old, and we have uh, nearly 14,000 employees and with the 850 branches uh, around 4,000 ATMs and probably half a million merchant point of sales. We can say that we have a good uh, footprint in uh, Turkey and also we are uh, keen on to be uh, leading a digital uh, bank uh, in Turkey and just a brief information about Turkey. The Turkish market is quite young and the 50% of the population is the under the age of 29. So the- 50% is yeah. under the age of 29, okay. It's huge, and the total uh, population is around uh, 80 million. Okay. So Turkish economy is quite uh, performing very well for the last 10, nine years. And so that's why being a digital leader is quite a crucial issue uh, for us. So with these numbers, we are performing uh, around probably the best or the second in many KPIs. Okay. And we can say that we nominated, we are nominated many times as the best bank in Turkey, best uh, bank in Europe from some of the uh, companies. Okay, and how long have you been there? So I've been there in 11 years. 11 years, but yeah. you said before that you were at some other banks. You've been in the banking industry for a yes, while. Yes, yes, I've been banking industry for almost 20 years. So I used to work two other uh, competitors of Akbank. Okay, so I'm curious, especially with that large percentage of younger people, uh -huh. how many of those people ever come into a branch or go to an ATM and, uh, and as opposed to using their phone? So they sure, uh, they, they sure, prefer the doing business in phone because they, they, it's quicker, faster and easy and the experience is quite much more uh, under control in the phone and we, we have, uh, we can say that we have 80-85% mm, of uh, younger people uh, are preferring the digital business yeah. uh, rather than the uh, classical ways. It's just it's just fascinating to me, especially in banking, because in banking, you know, it was that trusted yeah. uh, just, facility on the corner, sure. right, in every town that that you knew it was stable and it it was always yeah. there, and yeah. you went into the branch and you know you you knew some of the people that worked there, mm -hmm. and now almost the entire experience mm -hmm. between the bank and its customers is a digital interaction, especially for the young people. They've never been to a branch. Mm -hmm. They don't hardly ever go to an <laughs> ATM. In fact, they, they, you know, the whole concept of cash is, is kind of funny to them. You know, that's, it's a very different world. So digital transformation and banking mm -hmm. is so, so important. Yes. yes, they're going in hand in hand. You know, the, the, the millennials uh, are are living in the digital world so uh, and the after the millennials they they born in the digital world so it's obvious that uh, the business are uh, transformed itself into the digital way right. and to deliver the products and needs uh, in a way of uh, doing things uh, with the uh, digital processes. Right. So as, as chief analytics officer, yeah. with that move in, in the millennials, mm -hmm. um, of course there's always regulation and other things that are driving you know, your KPIs, yeah. but how has that m migration to younger people interacting in a digital way mm -hmm. impacted your job and what, what you measure, what you have to do every day? <laughs> they, they directly impacted my <laughs> job. <laughs> I used to lead the Customer Relationship Management Initiative for, for 10 years, uh, which covers the sales and marketing automation and the analytics and the design of the processes in the sales. And 
a year ago and a, one and a half year ago, we transformed the role into the analytics office, and we we are keen on to uh, deep dive in the customer behave and define what are the needs of the customer mm -hmm. and, how, and how is evolving in the digital uh, era. And we are uh, trying to uh, position uh, the bank's products uh, and the uh, communication skills in the, in the digital world uh, with, the, with the customers. So uh, it is similar in the old days uh, in, the, in the subjects, but it's really different uh, in details. So the story begins to understand the customer and the segmenting the customer right. uh, for sure for last probably more than 30, 50 years. Uh, but in the digital world, the, the footprint of the customer and the digital footprint is quite uh, diversifying the, the thoughts uh, in, the, in the corporate side. So uh, we have uh, around 50 million customers and nearly 90% is the retail ones and the individuals. So we need to optimize the banking, uh, let's say, uh, the, the cost structure of the bank and the for sure the digital business gives us the e enablement of the uh, optimizing uh, the customer service. Right, right. So the, the segmenting uh, the customers, uh, not for the value basis, the, the behavioral and the other uh, perspectives, and creating uh, very well-defined segments is the initial step. And we are redefining ourselves uh, in serving uh, in this era. So right. I'm just curious, you know, 20 years ago, we'll go mm -hmm. back to 30, but 20 years ago, how many segments did you use to, se to, to <laughs> segment your customers? I mean, how many kind of classes and how has that changed today? Well, 20 years ago, we have uh, three to five segments. Three yeah. to five segments, that's <laughs> what I thought. <Yeah. laughs> so it's, it's, it's like the big ones and the small ones. Right. And if, if you have uh, the NLT capability, you have the, the, the middle ones. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> for nowadays, we have uh, 80, 85 different uh, perspectives for the for the customers, and so we created that platform uh, to enhance the segmentation uh, capability uh, to serve our uh, specified problems of the bank. Right. And th I mean problems with the missions of the marketing, uh, right. let's say. So we are considering now the life stage, lifestyle and some spending behaves and some investment behaves, some credit risk behaves also as well. And the potentials of the economic size. Right. And we can say that uh, now we have more than uh, hundreds, but uh, the, the, the optimal point of the segmentation is, so you, you, there is no meaning to create some segments that you do not take some actions. To right, so right. The actionability of the segment uh, is quite coming forward right. uh, in this topic. So we created uh, the platform uh, to enhance the capability to uh, create uh, dynamic segments and dynamic targets to the each marketing event. Right, and I was going to say, and, and um, hand in hand with that, and, and you just mentioned a bunch of different variables. Yeah. How many variables fed that segmentation before versus how many variables today feed that segmentation analysis? Yeah. So it, it, it increases probably <laughs> hundreds, <laughs> hundred, hundred times. <laughs> so uh, we, we, we used to, I don't know, analyze a couple of hundreds of uh, dimensions uh, right. and variables uh, in older days. It's more than 10,000 today. More so than 10,000 variables yeah. to yeah. segment into hundreds of classifications yeah, of customers. Not? Yeah, sure. Wow. Well, there's a good uh, opportunity for an analytics of executive. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> how are you addressing that challenge, right? So, obviously, uh -huh. uh, you're here uh, as, as a data mirror customer. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, how did you do it in the past? Or what were the things you couldn't do? And what forced you to go with kind of a new platform and a new approach? So we can say that we, we, we have a quite well-defined uh, analytics architecture uh, in the egg bank and we are using different types of technologies in different types of uh, solution areas. Okay. Datamir is positioned uh, in the measuring of our uh, marketing campaigns. Okay. And as we mentioned, we have uh, more than millions of customers and we have uh, quite, we can say that, in a given period of time, we have more than hundreds of campaigns. So we need to uh, speed up the measure, me measurement of the campaigns and the results in a business perspective. And we 
when once we come across with the data here and the capabilities uh, of the technology is much much right. more related with the the hard structure and ease the integration of different uh, data sources in one place right uh, so we think that we we can optimize our uh, etl type of uh, measurement uh, data load right. technologies uh, transformed into the hard structure and uh, it seems it worked, so we reduced the time to transform the data uh, into a uh, single platform uh, from diversified places. Right, right. And we, we create a, a easy to use measurement platform uh, to give some feedbacks before the things are happen. Right, right. Because uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of elements to it, right? Just yeah. on the data side, there's uh -huh. there's the ingest, as you said. Now you have many, many variables, so you yeah. you got to pull from multiple sources. Yeah, you got to get it into a single place. Uh -huh. You got to get it into kind of a single format that then you can drive the analytics on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then sure. you've got to enable more people to have the power. And I'm curious how that piece of your business has evolved. Where mm -hmm. before probably very few people had access to the data, very few people had access to the tools and the training to use them. Mm -hmm. But to really get the power out of this effort you need to let a lot of people have access to that data, access to the tools to design these <laughs> hundreds of campaigns. Yeah. So how's that evolved over time? Uh, to be frankly speaking, that thousands of variables are related to the predictive part of the analytics. Okay. The, 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 but the other critical point is, so the results are how are things are going on uh, in the business side. So uh, as a banking let's say culture of egg bank so we, we 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 are keen on to put the business value on the front and then think with that mind and design each and every process in right. that way so that's uh, another perspective uh, to get support uh, to change the classical data uh, load and upload and transform the data and analyze the data to see the results that's that's the old, old way and we are we were good to be frankly, but we transformed that into a much more dynamic structure and the uh, knowledge, uh, as you mentioned, is a critical point uh, in the team. So the, the easy to use, the usage of e easy to use uh, or uh, of the technology, right. uh, quite another critical point uh, to create that type of thing uh, into the place. So at the end of the day, you're measuring uh, hundreds of marketing actions uh, just in a single month. And uh, if there's something happening that doesn't plant, so you need some time to rethink on this issue and redesign it. So right. uh, we think that we are at the door of this stage. So uh, we can say that we can uh, use the output of the predictive analytics much more in an efficient way by understanding the results in much more uh, frequently and speedily. Right, say. right. And would you say this effort um, has really been offensive in terms of you trying to get ahead of the competition to be mm -hmm. aggressive? Or has it been defensive and you know, if you're not playing this game, you're not really in the game anymore? So it, it depends on the uh, prior subject. Uh, if, if, if it's a uh, re retention action, it, it, it can be uh, defensive. It seems like defensive, but it, it, if it's a, let's say, upset action, it, it can be offensive. Th so right. there is no chance to choose one of them. Right, uh, right. Because we have variety of products uh, and variety of businesses uh, in Turkey that right. we are operating. And uh, at the end of the day, we need to uh, uh, serve each and every action. Right. So. And I think it was very insightful too that you said uh -huh. that you don't do it just for the sake of doing it and because you can do it. Yeah, it sure. That if there's no action that can come from it, uh -huh. or it's not actionable, what's the point? It's a wasted effort. Yeah, sure. At the end of the day, we are doing banking business, so we are not doing the analytics business. Right, right. So <laughs> that, that, that's the point. Right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so as you, as you look back, kind of, um, you know, what has been, you know, if the high level result of this effort, if you're reporting to your boss or, uh -huh. or the board of, of, of using this type of approach, and, and then secondly, where do you go next? You know, we're almost the end of 2017. What are some of your objectives and, and kind of priorities for 2018? So we are creating, uh, we are now just, nowadays, uh, 
seeing the results of the new system and it, we, we can say that in, in some actions we've started to increase the results uh, 10 to 15 percent and 10 uh, to 15 percent yes it's uh, in, in, the, in the result phase and it gives us some uh, courage to, to design new new use cases right uh, so the new cases the new use cases are much more uh, related with the visualizing of the results uh, in real time, these type of things. Right. And basically, I can say that uh, we are trying to get everything in real time. Right. And uh, the modeling in real time, measuring in real time, visualizing in real time. So we are trying to push each and every action in the analytics uh, to the closer. We do not want to work in the uh, offline. Right. Uh, in the past. Phase. Yeah. It's f fascinating to me that to think uh -huh. that we used to make decisions based on thi a sampling of things that happened in the past. Mm -hmm. Now we want to make decisions on uh -huh. all the data that's happening now. It's a very different approach. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Great. Well, uh, Attila, thank you for uh, for stopping by and sharing your insights. It's, oh, it's, it's, a, it's a pleasure to share. <laughs> all right. Absolutely. All right. So he's Attila Bayrak. I'm Jeff Frick. You're watching theCUBE. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.